good morning friends uh, in the lecture series of uh, the subject business analytics using python this is the last lecture for functions in unit 2 after that we will start string but for functions uh, in previous two lectures we have already discussed what are the functions what are the uh, function calling uh, what are the what are the calling function what are the called function how we can define the function how we can call the function and after that in previous lecture we have discussed the local variables and the global variables and what about the scope of the local and global variables by examples uh, we have discussed we have seen uh, what are the variables uh, what are the local and global variables and what are the scope of this those particular variables now we have uh, in this particular lecture in today's lecture we will discuss about the anonymous function and recursive function okay uh, the course outcome is same apply modular programming approach using methods and functions uh, syllabus we have already discussed the functions in python already discussed definition and calling a function types of functions we have already discussed what are the functions arguments and parameters now we will discuss the anonymous functions okay if you are discussing if you are talking about the types of function there so there will be the user defined function there are the uh, inbuilt functions like anonymous functions and you can say that recursive function there are the so many types of functions we can discuss till now today we will discuss in this lecture anonymous functions and recursive function okay uh, this is the objectives for our today's lecture anonymous and recursive function okay first one is anonymous function we will discuss this one lambda function you may call it as the lambda function or anonymous function lambda or anonymous function are so called because they are not declared as other functions using the def keyword this you keep in mind okay any of the functions if you wants to declare you will use the def keyword but if the function is anonymous or lambda function you will not use the def keyword first point rather they are declared using the lambda keyword lambda function are throw away functions that is they are just needed when they have been created and can be used anywhere a function is required okay they are just needed where they have been created and can be used anywhere a function is required the lambda function was added to python due to the demand from lisp programming okay lisp is what this is list processing okay we are not uh, going into the depth of lisp programming just you uh, simply remember or just you simply uh, cram that what is lisp it's the list programming theek okay? hai okay then lambda function contains only a single line its syntax can be given as lambda arguments then expression example is what sum equal to lambda x comma y colon x plus y print sum comma sum 3 comma y 3 comma y is what there are the two variables x plus y where it is to be given it will pass into the value of x and y and finally it will give the sum okay output is you can see this particular function that we have already defined what we can do over here def f a comma b comma c print a comma a b comma c am lambda x comma y colon x multiplied by y likewise as equal to lambda x comma y colon x plus y okay now f is what this is the function name s is what comma 2 comma 3 this is a corresponding to this a there will be the as b and c correspondingly 2 and 3 as there and finally f m 2 comma 3 okay these are the parameters actual parameters that you have passed corresponding to the function definition okay the output will be on the basis of the values like this one lambda y x multiplied by y 2 multiplied by 3 answer will be 6 okay like this print a bracket b comma c answer will be 2 and 3 answer will be 5 2 plus 5 okay this is the answer likewise x equal to lambda 
colon sum range 1 comma 11 the range will be 1 comma 11 now you will print x print x is what now you are going to take the sum you will take the sum from range 1 to 10 means you will uh, take the number from 1 to 10 because 11 is what the 1 plus corresponding to the range that we have already discussed while we have discussed the range function it will take the sum from 1 to 10 sum will be 55 and it is to be passed to the x okay and finally it will print the x output will be 55 is there any doubt you can ask otherwise we can proceed okay this is all about the lambda function or anonymous function next is documentation string this is optional we have already discussed this thing doc string or documentation string serves the same purpose as that of the comment your compiler language your interpreted language never uh, execute or read the comment section as they are designed to explain code however they are more specific and have a proper syntax you just uh, know how we can write the syntax of this documentation string def function name parameters function doc string function statements then return expression okay now you can see the program def function it is not the anonymous function because we have already defined def for function then program just print a message what will be the message it will display hello world this is all about what okay this is all about what we wants to print then print hello words exclamation symbol then finally print funs dot doc such types of syntax can be used for the documentation actually the print the this program just print a message it will display hello world what is it it is just the you can say that it is the documentation string that you have defined within the function and finally you print that function fun dot underscore doc underscore the output will be what that is to be printed into the double backslash uh, into the uh, double quotes okay now you can see over here def f a comma b comma c now you are writing the same code as you have written in this particular program the program shows use of lambda function okay print a bracket b comma c m equal to lambda x comma y equal to x multiplied by y again this is the same program that we have taken it from the previous slide just i have pasted copied that program from there and paste it over here okay just i wants to indicate just i wants to tell you how we can use this documentation string into the program output will be same if you take as 2 comma 3 if you take m 2 comma 3 as is what x plus y answer will be 5 m will what x comma y x multiplied by y answer will be 6 this program shows use of lambda function what is it this program shows use of lambda function this is the syntax with the help of which we can print the documentation string i think it is to be more clear to you people okay uh, let's proceed next is recursive function recursive function is what first of all i am telling you in simple words the function that calls repeatedly by itself or the function that calls itself repeatedly that is known as recursive function we can use we will use the stack as a data structure for using or for calling the function itself repeatedly recursive function is defined as a function that can call itself to solve a smaller version of its task until a final call is made which does not require a call to itself every recursive solution has two major cases which are as follows first one is base case base case is what in which the problem is simple enough to be solved directly without making any further call to the same function next is recursive case recursive case is what in which first the problem at hand is divisible into the smaller subparts and recursion utilizes divides and concurrent technique of problem solving for example this is the prog uh, this is the uh, problem or you can say that program for calculating the factorial of a given number how you can write this def is what syntax or the keywords to define the factorial function fact is what this is the function name n is the parameter if n is equal to 1 or n is equal to 0 then it will return 1 
okay if n is equal to 1 the factorial for 1 is 1 itself and for 0 for factorial for 0 1 itself in the both of these cases it will return 1 else return n multiplied by factor of n minus 1 n is what the parameter you will pass or the number for which you want to take the factorial multiplied by factor of n minus 1 it will multiplied by factor of n minus 1 until or unless it will reach to the uh, above zero n equal to what in input enter the value of n now you can get the number from the keyboard then finally print factorial of n comma is factor of n now you call the function over here factor of n means what if value of n is equal to 0 it will return 1 else it will return n multiplied by factor of n minus 1 n means what for example enter the value of n is 6 you will take the 6 n value of n is equal to 6 multiplied by fact 6 minus 1 5 means 6 multiplied by 5 equal to 30 after that uh, 4 then 3 then 2 then 1 6 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 1 the answer will be 720 this is the function or you can say that it is a recursive function where that particular function call itself until or unless the uh, uh, the conditions is true this is all about the recursive function next is the from import statements a module may contain definition for many variables and functions when you import a module you can use any variable or function defined within that module but if you wants to use only selected variables or functions then you can use the from an import statements for example in the offer uh, aforementioned program you are using only the path variable in the sys module so you could have better written from sys import path example is from math import by while you are calculating the area of a circle the formula to finding the area of a circle is pi r square from where you will get the value of pi either you can directly write like directly write 3.14 or if you are writing pi in that case you must import this one from math import pi you are importing the value of pi from math package then print pi equal to then plus pi pi is what 3.141592 something like that whatsoever the value of the uh, pi is it will give the output because this particular value come from the this from math import pi okay to import more than one item from a module use a comma separated list for example to import the value of pi and square root from the math module you can write from math import pi comma sqrt okay you can write like this or use this syntax for calculating such types of calculations next is making your own module making your own module means every python program is a module that is every file that you save as .py extension py extension is a module this is the program you simply write first write the these lines in a file and save the file as modules.py okay this is what the same program like def display function definition print hello then print name of called function is underscore name underscore this is what this is the syntax of anonymous function when we are writing the comments when we are executing the comment like statements we will use this one str equal to welcome to the world of python this is the variable definition then open another file main.py listen this is first write these lines in a file and save the file as my module.py now this particular program is to be saved as my module.py now you open the another file that is main.py and write the line of code given below how you can write import my module what is my module this will be the my module that you have already written my module.py you have directly importing this one my module then print my module str what is str in str the statement is welcome to the world of python equal to comma my module.str means you are using variable defined in my module then my module dot display what is the display it will print the hello it will print the this one my module what's whatsoever you wants to print that is welcome to the world of python 
okay then finally print name of calling module is comma underscore name underscore this is to be printed as as it is name of calling module is then name of the module and module name is what you are writing main dot py module will be main so like that you can make your own modules and how you will make like this how you will import like this okay you can try this one if you have face any problem then you can discuss with me next is dir function is a built in function that list these are the small small function that you should know how we can use these functions in our programming language built in function that list the identifiers defines in a module these identifiers may include function classes and variables if no name is specified dir will return the list of the names defined in the current module for example def print where x print x x equal to 10 then print where x then print dir output is what first of all it will print the x equal to 10 print where x is what 10 print of dir that this is bulletin doc file name package print where x something like that this will be uh, printed on to the console like this next is modules and namespace namespace is a container that provides a name context for identifiers two identifiers with the same name in the same scope will lead to a name class you know it very well what i am saying it to you we have already discussed this thing in our earlier lectures in simple terms python does not allow programmers to have two different identifiers with the same name you can never take the two identifiers with the same name if you will take then definitely classes will occur or you will face the consequences however in some situation we need to have same name identifiers to catch to cater to such situations namespace is the keyword okay in that case it will uh, conflict is to be resolved by the keyword namespace namespace enables programs to avoid potential name classes by associating each identifier with the namespace from which it originates like this one module 1 def repeat x in repeat x parameter is x itself return x multiplied by 2 in module 2 repeat x again in module 1 this is repeat x again you are using the same function name in module 2 repeat x parameter is again x but return x multiplied by 2 here return x multiplied multiplied by 2 i have already told you what is the meaning of this one is that means you are talking about the x to the power 2 okay here is x for example if the value of x is equal to 3 then 3 multiplied by 2 is equal to 6 here x is equal to 3 then 3 raised to the power 2 means 9 now you are importing module 1 you are importing module 2 and resultant will be the repeat x of 10 x of 10 is what ambiguous reference for identifier repeat x because repeat of x and the parameter is same in both the modules module 1 and module 2 definitely it will create a problem okay this is all about the but you can use the namespace to cater such situation namespace keyword can be used okay next is local global and built in namespace we have already discussed local global and namespace namespace in previous slides we have discussed during a program's execution there are three name main namespace that are reference the built in namespace global namespace and local namespace okay now one one new thing that is built in namespace local and global you are familiar with the term but the built in namespace as the name suggest contain name of all the built in functions constants etc that are already defined in python that is what is built in namespace global namespace contains identifiers of the currently executing module and the local namespace has identifier defined in the currently executing function okay global namespace contains identifier of the currently executing module and the local namespace has identifier defined in the currently executing function if any when the python interpreter sees an identifier it first search the local namespace then the global namespace and finally in the built in namespace therefore if two identifiers with the same name are defined in more than one or of these namespace it becomes Masked. This is what the local, global, and built-in namespace. 
okay preferences is corresponding to the first we will see the local then global then finally built in namespace okay this is the example of your local global and built in it is to be more clear focus over here def max of numbers this is what the global namespace no need to write it is namespace or something else you simply write what is it it is the global namespace you simply uh, writing the function name we have discussed till now what is global what is local we are talking about the variables now here we have discussed the namespace this definition of the function this is global then within this particular uh, within this under this particular function you write user defined function max large equal to minus 1 this is what this is local namespace then for i in number number from where it will come from the global namespace if i is greater than large large it what large is minus 1 i is what whatever we will pass into that i or this particular parameter actual parameter it will compare with this particular larger means larger is minus 1 definitely i is something positive if it is positive it definitely it will greater than the larger larger equal to i and now you will return the larger numbers are what 9 1 4 2 and 7 print max number max number is what 9 will be the maximum number the print max number print sum of these number sum numbers sum of these numbers means sum of these numbers sum numbers is what 9 plus 4 13 plus 2 plus 7 22 Minus one, twenty-one. Answer will be sum of these numbers, twenty-one. This is what this is the built-in namespace. So the preferential order is or order of the preference is what? First of all, we will include, we will uh, see the local namespace, then global namespace, then built-in namespace. This is all about the local, global, and built-in namespace. Next is module private variables. In Python, all identifiers defined in a module are public by default. okay this means that all the identifiers are accessible by any other modules that imports public means what anybody can access that particular identifier or variable but if you want some variables or functions in a module to be privately used within the module but not to be accessed from the outside okay then you need to declare those identifiers as private in python identifiers whose names start with the underscore are known as the private identifier this you keep in mind okay whatsoever where the uh, identifier's name is being start from two underscores with two underscores that is the private identifier and these identifier can be used only within the module in no way they can be accessed from outside the module therefore when the module is importing using the import star form module name all the identifiers of the module namespace is imported except the private ones thus private identifiers becomes inaccessible from within the importing module this is all about the modules private variables next is this is your package in python package is a hierarchical file directory structure that has moduled and other packages within it like modules you can very easily create package in packages in python every package in python is a directory which must have a special file called hi underscore init underscore dot py this file may very may not even have a single line of code okay no line of code is there in this particular init dot init underscore dot py it is simply added to indicate that third this directory is not an ordinary directory and contains a python package in your program you can import a package in the same way as you import any module okay for example to create a package called my package create a directory called my package having the module my module and the underscore in it underscore dot py file now to use my module in a program you must first import it this can be done in two steps first one is import my package dot my module or from my package import my module this is the way through which you can import the packages okay next is finally this is the last slides of this particular lecture that is global local and reload what is global what is local and what is reload 
global and local functions are used to return the name in the global and local namespace in python each function module class package owns a namespace in which a variable names are identified and resolved the result of these functions is of course dependent on the location from where they are called for example if you are talking about the locals it will be called from within the function name that can be accessed locally from that function will be returned global is called from where within the function all the names that can be accessed globally from the function is returned okay from that function is returned now reload when a module is imported into a program the code in the module is executed only once if you want to re execute the top level code in a module you must use the reload function and this function again imports a module that was previously imported that's all about the concept of function everything from smaller to smaller thing we have already discussed over here you can follow these slides you can follow the w3 schools you can follow the tutorialpoints.com and you can follow the prescribed book that i have already told you so many time okay if you have any doubt you can talk to me otherwise practice as much as you can this is the programming subject and it will only be it only will be work when you will be in the practice okay rest is up to you if you find any if you face any problem directly talk to me directly consult with me okay i am with you and you can uh, do your practice at your own okay uh, this is all about from my side and your function has already been finished now and in from next lecture uh, we start the string function okay thank you so much thank you so much